This is a fingerboard made by Teak Tuning that I'm about to durability test in a bunch of different ways to see how long it survives. That is correct. Today, I got a Teak Tuning fingerboard and I'm gonna put this to the limits. This might actually be one of the most famous beginner fingerboard setups that a lot of people start with. But can the board actually survive a bunch of challenges to see whether this is actually a good fingerboard? Let's see. The first test is just gonna see how the bearings do with a bunch of wear. If you have ever fingerboarded, you probably know one of the worst feelings is having dirt on your table. Not only does it feel bad, it also is bad for your wheels. Honestly, after all that dirt, these still run pretty smooth. The setup survived the very first test, but we still have a lot more stuff to do to this board. The next test will test wheel bite. We need to see if the deck can survive a bunch of wheel bite. I put a piece of wood on a fingerboard wheel on my drill and we're gonna test the wheel bite. Dude, look at the wheel. I saw some smoke for a second there. I don't think this wheel is in good condition. Dude, I did not expect this board to actually survive that well. The only thing that happened is it kind of like took the shiny finish off in that spot, but there's like no impact to the board at all. The next test is gonna get serious. I wanted to see how strong the paint is on the trucks. Just from doing that, the nut actually came off of the trucks. We gotta test the paint on the trucks versus a brick ledge. It always feels so wrong to do a nice grind with brand new trucks because it will scratch them. These trucks have paint on them, so I wanna see how long it takes until we get down to the metal. Dude, the nut came off of the trucks again. I'm putting lock nuts on just so they don't fall off. Paint on these trucks actually stays on so well. Guys, this is actually a life hack. If you're tired of like a 32 millimeter board and you want something a little more narrow, just like cut it down. In a matter of a couple minutes, we will have like a perfect 30 millimeter fingerboard. I don't know why more people don't do that because this is pretty much perfect. We also need to durability test the sticker this comes with. Before I put the sticker on, I need to clean the surface of the fingerboard with nothing but rubbing alcohol. 99%. Almost clean enough for the sticker. That stripped the finish right off of the board. That stuff cleans the board too well. Time for the sticker to go on a stripped board that is now only 31 millimeters. All jokes aside, don't put that on a fingerboard. It's making me mad how smooth the wheels still feel. That looks a little bit better. That's the feel that I want. Let's do a power slide test on sandpaper to see if we get flat spots on the wheels. Dude, I can't believe these wheels can't survive sandpaper. Unbelievable that fingerboard wheels still exist that can't withstand this test, bro. It's not that bad. I think we just need to make them a little more rounder with the sandpaper. I actually don't think it's the wheels that are the problem. I think it's the bearings that need to be cleaned with some water. I don't really know like the proper way to clean bearings, but I think water should do the trick. Just get some of that water in the bearings and these wheels should be back to new. Bro, are you serious? These wheels actually don't feel any better after that. I want to test the grip tape on this setup by doing dark slides. 
I don't really know what this rail is doing here. Honestly, out of all the tests, I would say this is a pretty accurate dark slide. Solid test, not too bad. I've had problems in the past when an axle slides through the truck, so let's see if these ones are loose. The bearing kind of like punched through the wheel, but I think we're all good. I might need to invest in these trucks because these axles did not move at all. A massive problem in fingerboarding that's very similar to actual skateboarding is the chip on your board when you hit something. There's countless times where the board just like slides away across the table, hits something and boom, your board is just destroyed. So we gotta do some accurate testing. It's not breaking the board, but it's breaking the ledge. It is a very big problem when you just kickflip and the board just gets away from you and hits something. Easily the most annoying part about fingerboarding. We have to see how easily the threads can strip on the kingpin and the axles. Dude, no way that didn't strip. I put it all the way on and just held it on and it did not strip. Spoke too soon, it stripped the second time. These might be some of the stiffest trucks you've ever seen. I kind of don't think I put the trucks on tight enough the first time, so let's see if we can get them tighter. I would say those trucks are on pretty good. Also, just from whipping the board across the table over and over, nothing really actually chipped, and there's kind of like no harm to the board. I feel like we need to make the board a little bit lighter weight just because like some of the parts aren't super high quality so they're kind of heavier. I think if we just keep doing this, the board will eventually become light enough that it just works better. After I cut the edges of the board, it kind of left a sharp edge here so I think we should just take that off a little bit. I kind of like the aesthetic of this. It kind of just like looks a little bit better, you know? The board is now lighter than ever, and I kind of rounded those edges out a little bit, so it should make tricks a little bit easier. Dude, this setup is still running mint. The trucks might be unadjustable now, and the wheels don't even turn properly, but hey, it's still a fingerboard. The board has a lot... I was just about to say the board has a lot more stress points to it and I just accidentally broke it, dude. I still wanted to test the board further. The board is banana colored and we now have a banana board. Dude, I can't believe that just broke. I was like just giving it a gentle flex and it just snapped. I wouldn't even consider that a stress point, bro. Like I, I barely did anything to that board. I barely did anything to that board. Through all that testing though, we do have some pretty nice fire starter now. I already feel like the temperature is starting to climb just from that, you know? Just a little bit of sandpaper and like maybe just like it'll buff out. I think just some super glue and like maybe on the belt sander a little bit to fix the shape. It'll definitely be back good. Maybe even just like some Gorilla Tape or like Flex Seal or something. Like, I don't know, it's definitely fixable. I think even just like some yellow paint on this board can make it look really good. This is how far a Teak Tuning Fingerboard makes it in the durability test. And this is also just what it looks like after. For anybody upset that I durability tested a perfectly good fingerboard, I will be doing a giveaway. Head over to my Instagram for a chance to win this exact fingerboard. I don't know what fingerboard companies could change about their boards, but they're just not strong enough. I've had a bunch of people message me saying they were just peacefully fingerboarding and their fingerboard just snapped in half. If that was the case, I think this fingerboard would have broken like instantly. Thank you guys all so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.